This is Brent with Likens Motorsports, and this is part two of our uh, Ford Tunnel Port Head uh, overview and assembly. <clears throat> and um, if you want to catch up on things, you can watch part one that I did several days ago. But we ended up having to get a different set of retainers. We couldn't use the pack retainers. And it turns out that the comp cams retainers that were supposed to have been standard height were... Uh, they were plus 100 as well. So had to get a set of manly titanium retainers and uh, I'm probably more familiar with the manly products than a lot of the others. And um, when they say that their retainers are standard height, then uh, they're standard height. But I wanted to take um, just a minute or two and just maybe explain some of the things that I talk about <clears throat> and some of the things that, that I do. This is a mock-up retainer. Um, so when we talk about install heights for the valve spring, it's the distance between this portion of the locator that I'm tapping on with my finger and the underside of the retainer where the spring sits. So you're basically adjusting the installed height of the valve spring by manipulating this distance and we do that for several reasons um, we can can we can control the the spring pressures that way the seat and the open pressures um, <clears throat> we can manipulate how far or close we are to how far away or how close to coil bind that we are um, how far away or close to uh, the valve seal and the valve guide that we are so, um, you know, we do this for several reasons, and the, the biggest reason is because of uh, adjusting spring pressures. So, we can adjust the install height by several different ways. Um, locks come in standard, plus 50, and minus 50, and there, I think there are a few minor flavors out there floating around somewhere, but that's the majority of them. Standard, plus 50, and minus 50. Retainers come in standard and plus 100. Um, locators are generally 60 thousandths thick. There, there's a few other options out there, but the majority of them are 60 thousandths. And obviously you can put um, valve spring shims. Uh, these are usually 15, 30, and 60 thousandths. You can put those underneath the locator. So we can shorten the install height or we can lengthen the install height and we can control the valve spring pressures that way so um what i'm going to do um i'm going to go through and check the coil bind clearance of the valve spring what, what we're basically going to do is we're going to verify that the spring is is doing what it's supposed to be doing and we just double check the manufacturers and double check the specs they have manufacturing tolerances just like anything else, so we're going to check them and make sure they're right. And uh, on on engines such as this, I go through and I check uh, every single install height. And well, I check install height on pretty much every engine um, that I build, and those are adjusted and blueprinted, as you would say. Coil bind clearances are um, checked on and on, on every engine. And on the racier engines where I'm uh, trying to get to a specific coil bind clearance, then I will go through and check every single spring and we'll take note of that in, in the adjustment process. So I'm gonna go through now and I'm going to uh, use a, a retainer and check all the coil bind clearances on, that, on these valve springs. The reason that you use a retainer is because the retainer loads the valve spring in in a different way this all right so we've got all of our valve springs uh, tested for a coil bind and what uh, dimension they do that uh, pack is a really high quality brand spring so all of these numbers are just really close to each other um, shows for for high quality processes the one thing that uh, I will say about checking is you can see that 
Max coil bind is inch 070. Uh, these coil bind at a little bit past that. So if you were to use the number on the box, uh, you would lose, you know, 30 thousandths of your coil bind clearance right off the bat. So it's always good to measure your parts, confirm that they are what they're supposed to be. And the reason why we check for coil bind um, is for a couple reasons. If it's too, if the spring um, coil binds at, uh, you know, not much more than what your valve lift is, then you can essentially um, make a solid out of the valve spring and you'll end up bending push rods and, and all kinds, kinds of other bad things. So coil bind is when you basically compress the spring until all the coils touch. Um, and you're bas basically making a solid out of the spring. If, uh, if you're too far away from coil bind, um, then you can get into what's called spring surge. Um, it's where just the spring is out of control, essentially. And um, so we try to get... Uh, somewhere in between those two points. Um, I normally don't like to go tighter than 50 thousandths from coil bind. Um, so that means that when the valve spring is installed, um, after my valve lift and everything, um, I don't want to um, go any closer to coil bind than 50 thousandths of an inch. The guys at Pack Springs have told me in the past that they like to see anything between 50 and a hundred thousandths coil bind clearance. So that is where we will shoot for. And uh, we'll get uh, some install height measurements next and see and check our spring pressures and see what we need to do to manipulate these valve springs to get the pressures we want and the distances from coil bind that we want. All right, on to the next step. Okay, this is my um, Endercomp valve spring pressure tester and um, you've probably seen this in other videos this is the uh, current install height of the valve spring uh, it's sitting at two inches 918 because it's not touching anything and this is the spring pressures that that it's going to read out i would really like to see around 250 or 260 pound seat uh, on this valve spring and somewhere uh, around the 625, 630 pounds open pressure, and then at the correct distance from coil bind. So let's look and see what we get with different install heights. If we set these up at 1900, which is what PAC uh, shows them installed at on the box, then we get 224 pounds, 225 pounds. Um, pack uh, measures these at 240. So there again, you know, if we were to install these at 1900, like they say, we'd be about 15 pounds light. So let's go ahead and go on down. There's one, essentially 1850, and there's 250 pound seat. All right, so if we if we set our valve springs up at 1850, we have 250 pound seat pressure. Our valve lift is um, right around 650. So if we go to 1200 from here, that would be where our valve would open. It's very hard to spin this holding the phone in one hand. It usually goes much quicker than this. I think we had 650 and 670 valve lift. So I'm gonna check it at 1200 and also 1180. There's 1200. We got 600 pounds there. If we go to 1180, we got 616. All right, so um, we'll go ahead and, and bind this spring up, and it binds at inch and 96 thousandths. 
if we gave ourselves 60 thousandths coil bind clearance, that would be right around inch 160, give or take a few. So let's back up and see where we would be on open pressure if we were 60 thousandths from coil bind. Six thirty. All right. So if we add one one sixty to our uh, six seventy lift, where would that put me? Inch eight thirty. Yep. Let's put on the spot. I had to do simple math in my head. Bunk. 250 pounds, 252 thereabouts. So if I set these springs up at an inch 830, then that would get me to around 625 pounds open pressure and make them what I want them to be. And that's part of engine building is taking the parts and making them do what you want them to do. So let's uh, get our install height. Um, on the head and see what we need to do to get to 1830. Alright, so if you just if you remember what we just did on the spring tester, we basically said that our uh, coil bind was 1100, so we were going to set our open at 1160. Um, if we set all of our valves at 1100, um, you know, we'd have 67,000 coil bind clearance here. Um, 78 here if i'm doing the math right um am i doing the math right yeah all right so you know that's that's well within the tolerance that i that i'd like to hit with these springs so and most of them are all around the same anyway um so what we'll do is um we'll check and see what we need to do and I'll put this on with one hand, and then I'll have to put the phone down to work my spring mic, and then I'll show you what the measurement is. All right, so with a standard retainer, minus 50 locks, a locator with no shim, we are at 1890, and I wanna be at 1830. So I'm gonna take this apart, I'm gonna put a 60,000 shim underneath, and we're gonna check it again. All right, standard retainer, minus 50 locks, locator with the 60,000 shim, and we are at 1.8, about 33. So that is uh, close enough for me. And uh, I'm gonna hop through here and check all of them and adjust and see uh, what adjustments I need to make. I expect um, the intake to be a little bit different than the exhaust, but that's what shims are for. And we'll set all these the same. Okay, so on this intake valve, standard retainer, minus 50 locks. With just a locator, I was at 1845. I put a 15,000 shim under it, and I'm at eh, 1832 or so. So I've got these two nailed in pretty close, and I'm just gonna go through um, and, and do all the rest of them. So once those are done, uh, then we will move on to the next step, putting the valve seals on um, and getting the heads assembled. All right, so at this point, I've got all the install heights measured and uh, they all come in really nice within several thousandths of each other. I got a couple of valve seals installed. Um, these are TrickFlow Viton valve seals. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load two valves in and check our distance in between our retainer and our valve seal. All right, so we wanna check this distance in between the retainer and the valve seal. We got 825 on this one. Obviously you want a greater distance than what you have lift. Um, and it's okay to run down to about 30 or 40 thousandths clearance there, but we're, we're gonna have plenty of clearance. So I'm gonna get all the valve seals put on 
and get these valves loaded and the springs on. All right, so we have an assembled head, pack valve springs, manly retainers. Everything went together really, really nice. There's our um, restrictor for our oil. I tap this to a 5 16 18 hole and has a 60 thousandths orifice in it. All right, all we have to do is get some paint on it and see what the difference will be. Finished product. It's a good looking piece, ready to bag up and um, wait on some some mock up and some uh, checking clearances when when the pistons and the crank uh, show up. All right, guys, thanks for watching. This is Brent with Blackens Motorsports. Appreciate your viewing. Um, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the like button if you haven't already and um i'll have more videos for you in the future thanks